Paul is a fascinating person. He is a guy who has had an incredible impact on the world. If you think about it, uh, his books, uh, his letters have been read by more people in the history of the world than any uh, ancient piece of literature that we have uh, in, in some ways. Um, he wrote more of the New Testament than anyone else. You, you look at real key turning points in the history of the church with Augustine or with Luther or with Bart in the early 20th century. Uh, they were prompted in their movements by Paul, by a fresh reading of Paul. And so I think it invites us to come to Paul with kind of fresh eyes and open hearts to say, Lord, what is it that you want to do in me that is fresh? So um, here's a guy who was uh, the first great Christian missionary. He moved the Christian movement across uh, what we think of as Turkey today, Asia Minor, uh, over into Europe, um, and really gives us a great, uh, a great deal of our New Testament. So big picture, that's who he is, a guy who's had a phenomenal impact, he's a profoundly interesting person. Um, if we think about uh, who Paul was and his identity, first of all, we have to think about the fact that Paul was a first century Jew. He's a guy who was uh, a rabbi. He was uh, raised in the city of Jerusalem under a, a prominent teacher of the day named Gamaliel. Uh, but he was Jewish. He was from the tribe of Benjamin. Um, he was a Pharisee, which means he was part of a religious group that really was interested in promoting the law aggressively. But he also was uh, a man of the broader Mediterranean world. He was born in Tarsus, which was a prominent educational center of the day, so Paul was very well educated. Uh, he also was a guy who was a Roman citizen, which really comes into his story a good bit. Uh, for instance, a Roman citizen had to be given a trial if he was arrested. You couldn't uh, beat a Roman citizen uh, without a trial. So, for instance, at one point in Acts, uh, they're about to interrogate Paul, and the guy has the, the whip pulled back to, you know, start beating on him to beat the truth out of him. And he just looks over his shoulder and says, you know, by the way, did I mention that I'm a Roman citizen? And it's like the guy drops the whip and, you know, backs off in fear because there were great punishments for those who punished Roman citizens without a trial. So Paul uses that. Um, so he was a Roman citizen. And ironically, um, when he's martyred, the, the church tradition says that he is not crucified. Uh, he, is, he has his head cut off because you didn't cru crucify Roman citizens under normal situations. So um, he, was, he was a part of this broader structure. Now, unlike Jesus, Jesus was not a Roman citizen. So Jesus was crucified, which was a, a heinous form of execution. Paul starts out as um, a Pharisaic Jew who is deeply committed to the uh, Judaism of his day. One, you, you had a lot of different expressions of Judaism, but you had this power structure centered in Jerusalem that had various parts, but the part Paul was involved with, as I mentioned, was really, really committed to the promotion of the law as the way that the Jewish people should live. Out of that commitment, I think Paul started uh, by seeing the Christian movement, this uh, following of Jesus, as something that was a tremendous threat to his way of life, his view of the world. You, you just think about the one aspect of the law with uh, the commandment to, um, you know, the Shema in Deuteronomy uh, chapter 6, verses 4 through 9. Uh, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is uh, one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. Well, that commitment to monotheism, I think Paul saw as threatened by this following of Jesus. Uh, so what Paul does is he goes after the Christian movement and is really trying to um, attack it, uh, put people in prison because he saw it as a religious threat. And he gets confronted by Jesus himself on the road to Damascus. And so you have to understand this is foundational for Paul's identity, for his sense of mission. Everything goes back to that point because suddenly 
He has intercepted in the course of history the, the living God, the exalted Christ, who is at the right hand of the Father, breaks into the world and confronts Paul and says, why are you persecuting me? So he discovers Jesus is alive and his whole worldview is shifted by that encounter.